What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live stream. International Master William Pascal. I think I just lost my window. How did I do that? No, I'm on the right window. Okay. Thought I was on the wrong window, but I'm on the right window. What's up, everybody? We are back. Five years and running. Weird that Astrobait isn't here. We've got 11 o'clock. I'm actually two minutes late to get started. So I thought we'd start something new today. I'm gonna... Actually, Astrobait is not here. Sheberspieler is here. What's up? Good morning. Morning, Fide Master. Sheberspieler. Busy at study, I'm sure. I was gonna go over some, some real chess here today. We're starting something new that we, we try to make it educational and beneficial. You're interested. All right. I'd like to go over some serious games and um, I'd also like to do some opening analysis. So I'm taking suggestions about opening analysis. I was actually thinking about looking at the Karo Khan. Wolfie is now found, Wolfie 2011. All right, I got this real obsession with <clears throat> with retro games. Um, I'm not talking about video games, that too, but I feel like there's a lot we can learn from the past. People only hear about playing like bullet chess or, or Magnus Carlsen rapid tournaments. The Morales Gambit, maybe we'll take a look at that. Um, but I want to go back. This is a tournament, there's a lot of interesting games with Steinitz and Blackburn and um, also let me see. There were some strong players in this event. 1873 in Vienna. And the first game I put in the study here is Blackburn versus Steinitz. Does anybody know about this, this era, 1873? Apparently, there was like the stock market crash. There was a stock market crash. And there was also like cholera epidemic, right? prior to this so it was hard to organize a big tournament I guess <clears throat> at the World's Fair in 1873 when there was like no people there um, due to cholera epidemic sound familiar not the first chess pandemic but um, Blackburn Science let's check this out this is their first game from 1873 first and second finishers in this tournament they actually there was a weird scoring system. There was like three game matches between the players and they actually had to play three times, which is weird, obviously, because you're gonna get an imbalance of colors with each player. Three games with each player and like, so they're like mini matches essentially. And whoever wins the mini match wins the, the point, I guess, technically. So, man, this guy keeps challenging me. That's annoying. Stop challenging me, dude. <laughs> he's claiming it's like video. Maybe it was, but he's annoying. All right, stop challenging me. I think I think Vidic, the grandmaster, just challenged me. I just blocked him. I didn't think it was the real one. If it's a real one, I apologize. I figure it's just one of his like some player who like idolizes him. Why would Vidit like just log on and randomly challenge me? All right. Anyway, so e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, e7. This is interesting. Yeah, Vidit, we're trying to do some serious analysis of Blackburn versus Steinitz here, and you're challenging me to bullet chess. That's why you're 2700, because you play bullet chess and we analyze classical games. But knight on g to e7 here is called the Cozio defense. Does anybody know much about this? I saw Michael Rode play this in the 90s. It's really unusual. So it's kind of like knight e7, knight g6 usually to strong point e5. <laughs> Funny if I if I really blocked Vidit. Everybody's like constantly creating these like profiles where they claim they're 
somebody else. Only a 10 year old kid would like repeatedly challenge you to one minute. All right, so this is the first game they played. Anyway, the tournament was 1873 Vienna, um, one of the strongest tournaments of all time. And Blackburn finished second to Steinitz, but he was first overall in points. He had like 21 points to Steinitz's 20, but Steinitz won by nature of the mini matches, I guess. But Steinitz set a record for this tournament at the time, I don't know how long it stood or if it still stands. It probably doesn't stand anymore. But anyway, it stood for a long time. He won like 16 games in a row. At the end of this, so the end of this tournament, he lost, he won like, he won like his last 16 games, counting the tie break with Blackburn. They had like a playoff match at the end. He started off badly and won 16 games in a row. That's pretty impressive. Although a lot of the players were weaker in this. You won 16 games in a row? Really? In a blitz tournament? In Vienna? So it's interesting because Steinus lost the match two and a half, a half to, to um, in the main tournament, he lost two and a half, a half against Blackburn and then beat him in the final. Anyway, what's the best move here? Does anybody have a theory? It's like the same guy's back again. It's gotta be, he created another account just to troll me. Okay, Vidit, whatever you say, blocked, go make another one. It's unbelievable. He created a new account at a different time control. All right, so I, I don't know, it seems like d4 opening the game but that's gonna let the knights exchange Miralis welcome yeah I try to ignore it I should just ignore it it just flashes there I'm like should we castle or should we play d4 this is my biggest question it was 17 games in a row so so basically Schieberspieler is world champion by nature of beating by nature of beating Steinitz's record, what about like modern records? Does anybody have an idea? You see, the question is castles or d4. That's the only two moves. The third move I find interesting and something I've seen in similar games would be like voluntary ret voluntarily retreating the bishop to c4. It's like moving the piece twice, but f7 is so weak it's like tempting. Look at that, there's a couple of relatively recent games Zvigintsev, so Sanal, and, and Demchenko have all played bishop c4. I mean, I've seen this kind of idea like in the, in the, um, Schliemann, I guess. It seems crazy to move that piece a second time, but I would be open to it due to the weakness of f7. Oh no, I didn't play the Steinitz, I played the Joker Piano. Sorry. My mistake. You would go d4? All right. Does d4 allow black to like, you know, free up his position a little bit with those knights are going to get to do what they want to do? Maybe like trade everything and play, play knight c6 or something. Actually, it's funny that you say that princess chess. The first game I looked at in this tournament, it was, um, I think it was Blackburn versus Paulson and this is weird to say in a way because Princess Chess is like an amateur. But Blackburn and he played a lot like you, Princess Chess. Actually, um, it reminded me of your your style of of the Italian game. It was funny. Like I was, oh, it's Princess Chess. That that wasn't my favorite game though. I thought we'd look at like you know the games against Steinitz, which are interesting. All right, whatever. So the, obviously the opening explorer on Leech Us doesn't include this game. I don't know why I'm getting challenged by all random people. So e takes d4, knight takes d4. You don't have to take this. By the way, it, you might be able to read it, but it says Blackburn versus Steinitz. So you know, it's 1873. Um, you know, I would think like you could sack a pawn here. 
Anybody? Blobix is like, why not take the center with C3? Well, that's the other philosophy. But I mean, if Black's slow to develop Blobix, right? Then we want to rip it open and punish him for playing knight e7 and having his king on e8. So there's nothing wrong with what you're suggesting, playing it like kind of classical Steinitz or something with c3. Jesus, it's the same guy. That's his third time control. Dude, this is incredibly annoying. All right. d5 is reply. That's true too. You know, what Schieberspieler or Antonio said. I've seen this before. It's like, that's another thing. We're, we're kind of weird. It's a weird, uh, it's a Ponziani, right? Bishop b5. It's a Ponziani with Bishop b5, 97. All right, dude, why are you doing this to me? Why is this guy doing this? What is wrong with this guy? He challenges me again and again and again. I think it's the same guy. That's the third person. The third time. He's a sad little man. Why would you keep challenging someone when they refused your challenge the first time? It's just totally rude. Now he's claiming to be from Afghanistan. Alright. He's the Afghan vidit. So... This is a Ponziani, right? We play like c3, d5, should be 5, and now black plays knight on g to e7. Sacking a pawn. Wow. There's actually a lot of games here. So, Blavix's idea is to transpose to the Ponziani, but I'm, I'm a little bit more into opening it up. Obviously, the castles is also possible. So check out what happened in the game, bishop c4. You know, Steinitz played similarly. With white in some some games. Wait, what am I thinking of? You know what it, I'm thinking of? Not, not Steinitz, but like Steinitz playing black in some Steinitz, Steinitzes against um, Schlechter. But I, I think that d4 is the most interesting with the idea of sacking a pawn here. What about this? Can we can we sack a pawn? Is this too much? We can go for this. Black doesn't have any weaknesses. I mean, this would work better, right? Like, this is how I play in, in the Smyslav system. It's a common pawn sack, like here. But I mean, in this case, black has a lot of weaknesses around the king side. When, when black hasn't weakened his king side, I guess this kind of gambit isn't as sound. What do you guys think? Knight g5? Knight g5 is a good, is a good um, suggestion because you're attacking the weak point on f7. But I suspect that this is a mistake for fundamental reasons. But maybe it's playable. I suspect that we're moving the same piece twice, but you can say the same thing about bishop c4. Lee Chess will restart in 10 minutes. Seriously. So knight, knight g5. If h6, <clears throat> what are we going to do? I think here we might have some problems. Queen h5 doesn't really work. Black would have many moves, including knight to g6. Anyway, I've, I vote for d4, but it's interesting, like, if you look at the modern opening explorer, the most popular move is castles. But fundamentally, I think... I think it, like, it makes most sense to open it up. But you guys tell me what you think. Cozio defense. E takes d4, knight takes d4, and g6, and now we can transpose to one of those g6 Smyslav systems.
All right, let's check this out. So bishop c4. I didn't really intend us to study the opening. I mean, I find it interesting. I got kind of sidetracked there. Bishop c4 is just a suggestion. So the actual game is d4. All right, d4. I agree with Blackburn. Um, takes, takes, and now Black plays knight takes d4. Trading pieces with no space. Steinitz is playing like Steinitz. I mean, if you look at his other games where he played black in the World Championship match against Schlechter, very similar the way he played. It's it's like you could guess this was him. Less space, trying to grab, you know, some room to move around. But, I mean, obviously the way queen is placed very well here. Weight has to be better. No question. This is logical. He gets untangled. And now queen d5. So this is theoretical novelty. It's an interesting idea outside the box. Blackburn almost won this tournament, but narrowly lost the playoff against Steinitz. He was an insanely good player. Did you guys know he was a checkers master and he switched to chess or drafts master? Um, that's an interesting factoid. It's the same troll, just keeps coming back. Now it's speedrun Hikaru pretending to be from Hungary. It's like a troll harassing me. They cre create new accounts every minute or something? Are you serious? I never get this many challenges in Blitz. This is a cool move, you know, kind of outside the box. The queen looks like it's very exposed on d5. He's not threatening anything immediately, but it has incredible range. You know, the queen is the one piece that really just... It's amazing when it's centralized. I don't know. No other piece has the kind of power. Even the rook. Not even close. Blobix. Gotta be serious. Alright. Steinitz does not look like Panda. You think they look similar? They have a similar build, maybe. We're trying to be serious. While well, these other people are streaming Puzzle Buzz and... And, um... Blitz, bullet chess. You know, we try to be serious and actually learn something. And Blobix is making Ponda jokes. So that's why you're not a GM yet, Blobix. Queen d5. So check it out. 13, let's see, 30 plus games, and there's no games with Queen d5. And, you know, Blackburn was probably a better player than pretty much anybody here, with the exception of maybe Huebner. Um, but who knows? You can't compare compare players of different generations. This is this is the move of a genius. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight c6, queen d5. Obviously, he sees that it can be attacked by knight b4, but makes the judgment that he's going to do it anyway. Maybe it's not genius. Maybe it's a mistake. But at least he's willing to think creatively. So let's see. Queen d5. <clears throat> this queen d1 is kind of passive so I bet stockfish would be down with queen c4 that's his favorite square it's a little weird with the bishop on b5 queen e3 is like uh, a version of the this is normal it's like a version of the center attack where your bishop's out on b5 I like White's position. White has an excellent score here. But this is new. Lee Chess is seriously going to restart in five minutes, guys, so just bear with me. You're going to lose Lee Chess, but you'll still here, be here with me, so don't worry. I want to know how this player just keeps creating new account. They must have, they must be like uh, some kind of like. strange troll who just is able to create unlimited leeches accounts why why are they bothering me what did i do to you 
Well, if it's no problem, why do they keep making that announcement every minute? Like, like the world is going to end. All right, Bishop E7. Nuclear reaction in four minutes. Bishop E7, Knight C3. Bishop F6, wow. Do you think that black would castle here? And he plays bishop f6. Does anybody else think that's kind of a weird move? Steinitz was all about like unraveling, trading off some pieces to get space. To get enough space. What about you, Shiver Spieler? Do you think bishop f6 is weird? I would assume like castles is just obviously the best move. Is there any reason why black doesn't want a castle? I mean, seriously, he's afraid of h4 or... Why does this person want so much attention? All right. You need attention. I don't know, it seems strange to play bishop f6 first. And then white played bishop d2. Would you guys be worried about bishop takes c3 check? I guess something to consider. The structure is going to be pretty bad if castles, bishop takes c3, b takes c. Sort of a modern, a modern nimzo for black here. Blavix remembers the days. He was a great chess and checkers player, also a formidable football player, and a subtle dancer kind of guy I wouldn't like to find them my way if I hit on a girl. There's no way these are different players, right, repeatedly challenging me. It's just the same player with 50 different accounts. How did I get so lucky? There's no way it's, just, it's a different person. They're just firing away with like 20 different accounts challenging me. That's pretty annoying. Maybe the Lee Chess restarting will throw them off. This looks like one of my Budapest gambits against Morales. Morales would do well in this structure. Good chance to control e5. You have a weakness on d5. Just pretend you're playing the the booty and you'd be fine. It's a good suggestion, Princess Chess. How do I find turn off challenges? Good luck with that. Preferences, privacy, there it is. Privacy, oh, it's down. Leechess.org is down. We expect to be back very soon. Thanks for your patience. All right, so this will be back shortly, hopefully. Lots of lots of adverbs. All right, that was fast. Let other players challenge you. Only friends. Haha. -ha. All right, 
Let's go back here. Friends. All right. Yeah, I don't want to let him trade pieces, so so Blackburn just goes ahead and plays bishop d2. We've got to be careful of knight, knight to b4. But wait, ask queen b3, guarding that. But it is, this is awkward that we're tripping on our own feet, you know, with the queen retreat. The bishop gets in the way of the queen. They just add 15 seconds extra and life goes on. Now it castles. And now what do we do? What do we do with our king? Is Blackburn going to castle queenside and go like a maniac with h4? Or is he going to castle kingside? What would Miralles do? I'm a little bit concerned about a queen position, but Black's pieces are all in the back rank, so what can he do? Here. a6. This is the other issue. Do we really want to lose our bishop here? I don't think Blackburn is going to go for the end game with bishop takes c6, d takes c6, try to grind him down. By the way, like how would Black recapture here with a b-pawn, right? b-file? Jurassic chess is great, man. This is classical romantic era chess. Lots of dinosaurs. There were mastodons. Probably the last mastodons were still alive when this game was being played somewhere roaming the jungles of Brazil in 1876. I'm just kidding. Mastodons were probably long gone, but um, but it's a joke. All right, bishop takes c6. How do we recapture? This, you know, is seriously like a four on three kingside majority. I'm not sure, like how would you guys recapture? This looks like attacking chances. But he plays this. Keeping the bishop pair. Nice. Nice range of the bishops. You are playing Steinitz here. This is a problem. There's also knight d4. He's like begging for knight d4. But black needs to get developed. So now f4. Controlling the e5 square. But white will have to take care, you know, that this pawn on e4 can't be protected by a pawn necessarily. Then g6. Weakening the king side. Is that a good idea? I don't want to use the engine unless we have to, you know. This is, we're supposed to be thinking here. Trying to avoid using the, the oracle for analyzing classical games. Um, unless we get into a very, very crazy situation, I would prefer to avoid that. Welcome everybody to my stream, International we, 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 I lost my mind. Oh my god, International we, we, we. Nobody ever clipped that. Okay, because that was weird. G6 surely looks weakening. Yeah, surely. It does. It does. <laughs> Hold my beer. Seriously. I've got to clip that. Intermas international blah blah blah. <laughs> I lost yeah, it. Yeah, baby. I lost it on that, man. That's why I didn't go into radio. All right. Seriously, g6, but I mean, okay, he's worried about what? Like g4, g5? The pawn wave? There's no immediate threat, right? Wait, wait isn't like killing him yet. The question is, what can black do? Like here? This is an obvious suggestion, right? What, what the heck is this? After bishop e6, queen d3, knight b4. This is sharp. But I mean, I'm really not sure what's going on here. 
Does he go to h5? But I mean, then we get like g6 with tempo. Like seriously, what's up? What's up with bishop e6? There were like two notes that I deleted from the website where I grabbed this game, and I have no idea what they were. I mean, seriously, this looks pretty tempting, right? Here, queen g3. And now, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, knight takes a2 check, and so much for the main on g7. So it almost looks like white has to play queen h5. I guess that's what would have happened. And then I guess g6. Now our queen is, is pretty awkward. Like, where do you put it? If you go here, bishop g7, and now it sucks, because you have to play queen g5. Or queen f3, which walks into knight to d4. I'm really unconvinced here. I almost feel like calling in the in the oracle to verify. Let's see. Wow, so it thinks ninety four is even stronger. Bishop e six is just a routine. Damn, the queen is almost trapped there on d five. She was able to do anything to humiliate me on my stream. We didn't get to the opening theory part of our segment yet. Sadamasa. Second half of the stream. There's a young French poker player in Budapest who tries to learn chess. I don't know any young poker players. I'm too old. Maybe if you had asked me like 10 years ago. But those ones aren't young anymore. Clement Riches. Well, I'll keep it in mind, Blavix. I have a lot of friends. Of course, like poker is dead now. 94 is even stronger. That's impressive though, 1600 level already, and he's in Budapest. It's a bad place for a poker player to be. I don't understand why a poker player wants to be in Budapest. It was better than the United States. I just stayed here because, because I was like banned from playing poker in the United States due to the fact that it was like not allowed legally. But poker in, in Hungary sucks. Like there's no reason to be here. Yeah, online. Yeah, I guess it's a cheap place to live. Is there some reason he can't play in France? I guess it's just cheaper to live in Budapest. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that came here from other countries at one point. But usually from countries where it was like banned or something. Yeah, I guess in France there's, maybe they just, yeah, they just have like a, a rule where just the French players can play on pokerstars.fr or whatever. There were problems with France making it like just just French players on the same site and stuff. Yeah, I remember now. Um, so I can understand that. F4. So G6 is like a terrible move, weakening Black's king side. Yeah, they had restricted it so the French players can only play with French players, which is ridiculous. They wanted to do that in Hungary too. But in Hungary, the market is so small, it would have been a complete fail. In France, they can kind of like barely get away with it. But it's a disaster for online poker when you just can play within within your country. Not enough players. Um, all right. But man, Steinitz, let's, let's just go. So he plays g6, weakening his king side. Yeah, he had a strong move here, knight d4. Wow, 
Well, you would have a5 for whatever that's worth. <laughs> but I don't think that's a great square, necessarily. So he has knight d4 and, and rook e8. And white isn't threatening anything, really. If we play knight d4, what happens? Yeah, well, h5 is a normal square. I'm just saying, like, knight d4 changes one thing, that it gives white this a a5 square. But I don't think that's going to be that relevant. Yeah, h5 is always is always going to be one of our main main squares. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, this is why no one plays queen d5. That's the lesson to be learned. The queen is too exposed on d5. g6, queen d3, bishop g7, and now the old h4. Somebody said h4. Did you say h4? Basically, Blackburn would have been a good center attack player. I wonder if he ever played the center attack. Cuckatry, that was you. Did he ever play, like, d4? Pawn takes, queen takes d4. Clearly h4, h5. Now, if knight b4, queen c4 is a tempo... So, I mean, we can play h5, that drastically weakens the king's side. We can let way play h5. Where is black's counterplay? By the way, this game is from the regular tournament in 1873. Steinitz would go on to, to beat Blackburn in a playoff at the end of this tournament, but he lost their regular match. He does play h5 and g4. Imagine that. What I like about Blackburn is that he was aggressive. Fearless, even. C5, where's the queen going? Asking an interesting question. Sometimes we should think a little deeper. Difficult questions deserve difficult answers. Yeah, I looked at bishop f3. Obviously, that's the only logical move. I mean, you could... I guess you could just sit there and stick a knight on d5 when he threatens you. Theoretically. Like, if you played h5, bishop e6, knight d5, b5... I mean, it looks horrible, but... Technically, white is still still going it looks ugly b5 immediate same thing though isn't it you can't trap the queen directly it doesn't look good for white I'm not saying I like this but Definitely a tight spot for this queen. Wait, is It's hard to corral the queen altogether. So this is what happened. He goes g4, h takes g. What about bishop takes? That doesn't help us, does it? This way, at least, like, the g4 pawn is protected. And this bishop gets in the way a little bit. White's bishop gets in the way of his pieces a, a, a tiny bit, not much. 
This is pretty brutal. He just rips open the H file. And then the Morales. Oh. This is how Morales got so good. And he was saying, I bet for white. The moral of this story is never give up your strong point on E5. If black had not played E takes D, he never would be facing E5 now. Never give up your strong point. Never get out of the boat. This, is this a problem, master? The thing about Blackburn, he was very strong tactically. Combinations and stuff. Queen e8, knight d5. Not a bad position. Hello. How's the d5 score? So, do you think that white won control of the center? If you're, if you're teaching chess here, this game is like probably a pretty good illustration of the importance of control of the center. Do you think like we won control of all four central squares? For white, have better mobility. Oof. I think the the weakness around the dark squares looks so severe that white can just play like knight f6 check and then this is coming. Totally over. So it's just over now. I mean, was the last move pretty stupid? What is he going to do? He has to defend. So bishop f5. Bishop f5 was suggested. Check here, and then bishop c4. Nope. And now, yeah. Yeah, no, there's no reason to do something like c4. This, this is the idea that the dark squares So it's just over. Steinitz getting crushed, and he won this tournament at the end. So now what do we do? Last chance for Black to save the game, somehow. I mean, I guess the problem is queen g3. A problem. Still, it's not that simple, though. Like, queen g3, queen f6. Bishop c3, queen f4, check. That'll win a rook, actually. That would suffice. So, we're threatening this, followed by this, and this. But probably white can win other ways, too, by doubling the rooks on the h file. Now, what about queen a2? Do we have some kind of brilliancy? This is pretty annoying. Queen takes a2. There's no immediate mate with like rook h8 or anything crazy. So white's going to have to be to be tricky. Maybe bishop c3. Is a secret to give the king a, a square on d2? I haven't played through this whole game, so... I probably looked at it maybe once somewhere in the distant past, but... I don't remember the move, so I'm not... I'm, I'm refreshing my, my memory here, live. It has to be, right? We have to go to d2, and... Now there's some threats. This is gonna hurt. Rook h8 is gonna hurt. Maybe not, though. He could throw away a knight on e5. But it's just nasty. Like, all of White's pieces. I could say nasty again, because Donald Trump is is no longer president. It's, it's very refreshing. I don't have to, like, not use words <laughs> anymore that remind me of him. But this is a fa fairly nasty position for Black. King f7, run away. Yeah. Check. Here. Oh, this is so mundane. 
You were hoping for something brilliant. I was hoping for something more brilliant. Maybe White has something better here. I mean, Rook... Seriously? The best we can do? Is there is there nothing better? Bishop c3, king f7. Maybe we have queen e3, don't we? Oh, that looks... That looks better. Come on. If we cut him off before he runs away. Guys, any votes? For queen e3? There's a check on a1 that doesn't do anything. Donald says he wants to immigrate, migrate to Budapest because he likes Victor, who's not a loser. That sounds like something that... They kicked him out of Mar... They'll probably kick him out of Mar de Lago. He might have to immigrate here. He'll definitely be safe. Whoa, Bishop C4? Schieberspieler, how does Bishop C4 work? I heard that Victor won't let Trump immigrate to Hungary because he doesn't like losers. Um, what are we going to do? Well, how does Bishop C4 work? It would be nice, but I don't see this Shiva Spieler. Maybe we're still winning. I was hoping for this, but I'm afraid of Rook H8 holding the blockade. Yeah, yeah, and that's a cool variation. Queen E3, Queen E6, Bishop C4. Takes Rook H7 check. King g8, rook g8 check, king h8, rook h1. Good job. Yeah, I was looking at this as well. But we have a problem on, on rook h8, it seems. But there's got to be a solution. Well, when you play rook h7, he's getting away. I mean, that's what happened. He's getting away. I didn't want him to get away. There's no doubt that rook h7 is a good move, but I was hoping we could, like, mate him. That's the point. I'm trying to mate him, you know, but he's got rook h8. I guess I'm just trying to do the impossible here. There's no mate. There's nothing. There's just nothing. You just can't get through. Black has a blockade. Well, b3 would be good except for maiden 1. And after that, I'm out of suggestions. <laughs> this sucks. Like, we can't do it. Um, so he had to, I guess. Check here. Bishop takes g4. But it's sad to have to win, like, sort of, like, routinely, almost. Bishop takes g4, threatening this. Black's position is crumbling. He's lost. His king's on the back rank. He's cut off. His a rook is gone. And he can't survive. It's devastating. He just resigned here. Was there any any move at all here for black? Bishop d7 is over. So rook d8, and that allows... <laughs> That's beautiful, though. This is the best. Rook d8, queen e7. We're actually missing Astrobate today. The epaulette, mate. The general's epaulettes on f8 and d8. This is, this is Blabic style. 
Bobic's generation chess. Memorale style. You can't you can't defend against the threat of bishop d7 check. It's awful. Man, that was brutal. I'm gonna spend part of the time on um on some opening analysis, but let's grab one more quick game. You know, Blackburn was known as uh, the Black Death, so to speak. Anderson Blackburn. I don't know, this game I haven't seen. The other strong player in this tournament was Adolf Anderson. Obviously, Philly Door was strong, relatively strong. It's not going. Bear with me. Bear with me, people. trying to grab a game to share with you guys because sharing is caring sharing is Karen is for Karen where's the window we're on mr. bird because bird is the word damn it All right, it worked. It's working. Yes, Wednesday retro game analysis. Game chapter four. It's even chapter two. This is um, Anderson. Anderson Windows. Guys, thanks for joining me. We're going to look over one more quick game here, and then uh, we'll do some opening work. 1983. 1873. So they not only had a pandemic with cholera, but a, but a stock market crash as well. So you think we have it bad now. It was even worse in 1873. All right. Basically, Vienna 1873 was the, the weekend's day of, of the time. Just no Magnus. Everyone, Rick, what opening theory are you going to look at? Whoever makes the biggest donation can pay. We just had a follow. We try to do real things here. It was, no more. Weird openings got boring. We need to be adaptive. I'm gonna take a look here at um, game Anderson versus Blackburn. Edit, pawn the text. You know, when you get older, you don't change. And that's bad. You gotta be able to change.
adapt and be willing to change. Now my, my thing's too big. Blackburn. I'm just gonna call him Anders. He was the son of Anders. Anders versus Blackburn. Anders versus Black. Okay guys, just so you know what we're looking at, I'd like to keep that updated. Hey, where's my, um, here we are. Me chess says I'm not your friends. Did you think we were friends, troll? Seriously? All right, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, and now I'm gonna look at this from black side because the bird is the word. Black bird. <laughs> This is Adolf Anderson versus Blackburn from 1873, Vienna. I just didn't feel like we're getting thing out of Wednesday weird opening stream. We're gonna do something more constructive, actually learn. Knight to D for the bird's defense. Blackburn definitely um, probably was one of those guys who played like this against the he definitely played it against the Joko. This variation was a known, like, sort of opening trap. He was basically a kind of, like, hustler. This is known to be bad for white. Like, knight takes queen g5, although Bronstein wasn't sure. Poor troll is so confused. Sorry, troll, I had some guy, um, really annoying literal troll who was like challenging me with 17 different accounts while I'm trying to analyze here. So I had to enable friends only challenges. So okay, bird's defense. This is not the bird's defense. This is this is worse than the bird's defense. Because you just play knight takes d4 and the bishop is extremely strong here. It's not that complicated. White's just better. So the real vidit who thinks the real Vidit was challenging me to his first Lee Chess game? I think it was one of his 11-year-old followers. Um, okay, bishop b5, knight d4. So the point is the bird isn't so bad because the bishop's not on this good diagonal. The bird, it's not a great opening. It doesn't make sense in terms of principles, I think. We're moving the same piece twice. I mean, this is a waste of time, essentially. I can't believe Vidic doesn't know I don't play bullet chess. It's unbelievable. He should know that by now. That's why I'm not 2700. What is the guy thinking? Knight takes d4, e takes d4. And now, I usually castle, so that's kind of main line. But we could, you know, we could go back to the old bishop c4, just like Blackburn himself played against Steinitz in the last game. But let's talk about the pawn structure. In the last game, we saw the same knight takes d4, pawn takes d4, but in a different situation where white was capturing. But this is almost as bad. Yeah, that 11-year-old kid was trying to trick me into thinking he was the real Vidit, but I'm not so easy to fool. E takes d4. We still lost our strong point. Uh, even though the pawn still exists, Black lost his strong point. So I don't like this, but people play it. I saw Nair play it once in a Swiss tournament. He's the only good player I've ever seen play the bird's defense. Seriously, in, in 30 plus years of tournament play, I've seen one strong player play the birds one time. That's how good it is. It looks like even Magnus has played it though, back 2014, when he was 2877. Halifman played it against Kasparov. I was not aware of that. That's funny. I remember Halif been playing the Winnower. Oh, that's crazy. So he got a draw against Kasparov in this line. Wow. 
I wasn't paying attention. I remember Halif been drawing Kasparov in a, in a bishop a5 win a work, but he actually played the bird defense against him? Dude, that's crazy. Although I guess it's something you would never expect. I think the bishop a5 win a is definitely better than this stuff. Threat or a promise, I'll be back. Alright. Terminator Spieler. D3. Again, I, I don't see any reason not to castle here. D3, you know, theoretically allows like bishop b4 check, but that's probably not a good move. The other thing is if you castle, you have an option to play either d3 or c3, or maybe just f4. You have lots of flexibility. Maybe you'll play c3 instead, just like eliminate this pawn and, and play for d4. White just plays d3 here. So I guess the big question, does anybody here know anything about this opening? I've never played the bird's defense other than offhand blitz game. I'll tell you one thing I don't like though, is like putting my bishop on c5. I fully have to do this in the Morales variation of the Sicilian a few times. I have to say, um, what's the best Bill's DVD on chess lecture? I honestly don't know. I've done so many of them. I don't think they pay me for those. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. They had, they definitely have like reviews. Yeah, I like Bishop C4 too. As I mentioned, th this is a cool move. Similar to what we saw last game. Um, ED4 d3 c6 I hate putting the bishop on c5 though it's something like against my religion you prefer the cordel wait what is the cordel again What is Cordell? I can't remember now. So White's d3 is kind of quiet. Bishop c5. But he plays c6, which seems more fundamental. I, I just don't like putting my bishop on c5 unless I have to. But I don't know if it's going to have a better square. Oh, you like bishop c5. All right. Here. I mean, sometimes you play bishop a4, right? Ultimately, the bishop comes here and it doesn't hit by d5. Johnny Hector. Vladimir Gretchkin. I played that guy. It's like a Russian 2200 player. Played weird openings. That's like the New York Open B tournament, 1999. Probably. All right, Bishop C5, Bishop C4. D5, this is what typically happens, right? Oh, F5, right, yeah. So that's the Cordell variation. Bishop c5 and f5, but it would be in the normal line, like castles, bishop c5, d3, something like this. You're doing something like this, like f4, f5. This is a, a very, very famous uh, example like Kamsky, Ivanchuk, I think. This is quoted in a lot of the Spanish books. This is one of the only examples of top players playing in a 
in a bird's defense. My chest lecture would be great on chest 24 and they pay for it. Yeah, I'd rather work, you know, making videos that I get paid for. That's always a, a plus. Well, I got paid for doing the videos, but I'm not sure I get paid for the DVDs, is what I'm talking about. I guess I lost my rights or something. So F4. D3, knight e7, so the actual game now in question is c6. Anyway, I don't want to get into an opening discussion. That wasn't my intention here. Bishop c4, and now he played knight f6. Shirazi. Definitely the Shirazi. Anna Rudolph. There's a chess 24 lecturer for you. Um... Anna Rudolph in her prime in 2011. I think I played her in 2011. She made her I am norm. Bishop c4. I prefer bishop a4. I don't see why we want to get hit with tempo. But this is interesting. Blackburn doesn't want to play d5, though that's the main move. He goes here. And if e5, now d5, that's the point, I guess. Right? Or do we go knight g4 or something? That's it. Not good. Not good. I just want to check with the oracle, but this looks okay. Although someone on sound would love White's position, it looks like a, a hillbilly attack or something. Black is pretty solid here. So knight f6, and then d5. And he just takes with a knight. Oh no, this looks like one of Morales' anti-Sicilians. Here it comes. Rook e6. So if rookie one check, no problem. It is possibly a problem. Adolf Anderson here played knight d2, which is okay, but it doesn't have much real pop. We're obviously concerned about the open file. If white has some kind of immediate threat, that's the question. So check, bishop e7. And then bishop g5. Whoops. Okay. What's happening? Jula Emodi played this. Fide Master. I don't know. This looks a little unpleasant for black. So that's clearly a mistake for white not to play rookie one check. There's also this move, which looks interesting, which Gil Brusek, who's an I am from. And I am from, uh, from, from Mexico against John Stopa, who was actually Boylston Chess Club champion before I went to Boston. These are good players. Bishop e7. That's another interesting move. So this is clearly a mistake. Now bishop e6. Most people would like try to castle king side, but Blackburn plays bishop e6. You don't telling me he's going to try to castle queen side here. You don't tell me that, because that's crazy. No. He's going to try to castle king side, hopefully. 
Yeah. Comes to his senses. You can't castle queenside here. I mean, you're, you're too opened up. And white just doesn't have much. So basically, Anderson played like a little bit hesitantly. D3, bishop d2, knight d2, bishop d2, queen e2. He didn't really do anything. And he slowly let black equalize. So now it's basically equal. Though I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the queen here on the e-file. And now finally f4. But f4, you know, it's an aggressive move, but you weaken this square. Is this going to be a problem? Though I don't know what options he has, really. Queen here. His knight's about to get attacked with f5. It's almost like f4 is a defensive reaction. Black's ready to take the initiative. Maybe. And my favorite bishop. But that's a big problem, right? The e3 square. It seems like both sides played more or less correctly. It's just that white played a little bit passively. And now this. Can white blockade? The million dollar question. White trades off the white square bishops? Or they get exchanged in any case? A2, these pawns look kind of weak. And while white is like busy blockading that dangerous pass pawn, it looks like his queen side could fall. So he plays this. Queen is the best blockader. Wait, that's not how it goes. Knight is the best blockader. But the situation is not so simple. There's threats to penetrate down here. So white has problems. If he exchanges, he's like hanging his A pawn on A2. So this is actually Anderson versus Blackburn, 1970, 1873 even. Queenie two is um is the game. We're good guys. I'm gonna do some we're gonna do some opening analysis after this. But white is clearly in trouble. Like the pass pawn is really strong. And his pieces are all blocked up. So the bad bishop is better than the bad knight on g3. Bad bishop, bad knight. Which one is worse? All of white's pieces are restricted behind this like crushing pass pawn on e3 now. Who would have played rook f6? What is his intention? Rook d6 to come down here? But white's going to just maintain the file. Bang, 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 bang. And now rook d1. Rook d1 can't be played because this hangs. Black is actually sacrificing a pawn. I would look at this, even this move. The problem is if you play queen d2, it's just rook e1. Black has compensation for the sacrificed pawn, but not more yet. But he has this. And this is gone. And then his whole structure is, is gone. But after g4, he doesn't even go for this pawn. Damn. Rook d8, threatening rook d2, very direct. Can you take a rook, yo, check with e2? No, I mean the rook's taking. There was no real options here. White's now weakening his king side, 
and this is extremely strong. It looks really good. I don't understand. Sack the queen how? What do you mean sack the queen? He's got it covered. I don't see what black could have done. Otherwise. When you trade a pair of rooks, sack the queen, man, it's protected twice. He just takes to the rook. I don't know what we could do. Otherwise. White has double protection on d1. There's no choice. Now you can play queen e2, but white just plays rook e1. So I don't know what else to do. This looks good. And now he finally takes the pawn, and the white pawn structure is... is really shaky. And black's threatening rook d2. Actually... Why doesn't this right away? Why doesn't this right away look good? Wait, that's to play queen f3. But I guess there's no... No killer finishing move. White is able to just sort of blockade here and, and try to take this pawn. It doesn't seem like there's a forced win. So he smashes his structure here and queen d2. Now any kind of endgame is a win. He's threatening queen e2 and rook d2. It should be winning. So if rook, if rookie won ninety three, does that make sense, master? Don't we have this right away? The trick is this, this, and this. <laughs> That's a funny position. That might not quite work. So here, he played c5. And that will defend the bishop on d4. And wait. Wait, resign. There's no threat. I mean, no defense now to this. Alright, good game. Good games there, Blackburn. Guys, let's take a look at some kind of opening here. Um, I was kind of thinking about Karo Khan, but any other suggestions are welcomed. Let's see. Study. Post a new study. Wednesday. Wild Wednesday. Opening. Opening ideas all right I'm gonna start a new study here this is a study you call this a study private otherwise all kinds of hell will break loose mr. Slohan no mr. Slohan wants to study the, the Sveshnikov bishop takes b5 sacrifice I told you the story about how I, that was the first chapter in, in Adorian's book on the Sveshnikov, or one of the first chapters. Actually, Blob explained the Sveshnikov, but he had it all categorized with decimal, Dewey decimal system chapters, and I was like 1100, 
And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, chapter 2.15786. Bishop takes b5. A little complicated for my level. That was one of my first opening books. I think I traded one of my other books for this Sveshnikov book from another one of my friends. And uh, it was like a ridiculously complicated to analyze that stuff. I was looking at something else. What, what about the Karakhan, where white plays e5, bishop f5, h4? Yeah, that was an excellent book, Blavix, published by Pergamon. Pergamon is something else now, I guess. They, they did quality chess books back then. Of course, the analysis was probably crappy by today's standards. No, Tile's move, of course, was G4, right? That's coming back, but, I mean, G4, G4 is, is another story. First question is, what should black play here? You know, I also, as as Morales and I have discussed, like, this is an interesting move. But it's another story. Okay, bishop f5, and the, the scariest move is h4. So the question is, what should black play, h5 or h6? Anybody? I played this once. I don't think that's currently in fashion, and I don't think it's a particularly principled move. It's a question of h5 or h6 here. I had a game the other day on my stream against Skaven Ingen, where I played h6, g4, bishop d7, and I'm not going to do this anymore. This is just passive for black. It, it, just, it just is passive. I don't like this. Every time I play this for black, I feel like I'm getting rolled off the board and my pieces can't get out. Queen c7. Wait, what? Queen c7. Shiva Spieler revealing his secret knowledge. It looks like a good way to get out of main line. At least queen c7 contributes some sort of like principled control of key squares. Dreyev played it twice in 2015. Looks like it, it hasn't developed a big following. Interesting idea, Schieberspieler. So that's something to keep in in the in the mind as a backup. But my main question is, like, if we play h6 or h5, which is correct? So h5. This is a lot of theory, though. There's a ton and ton of, tons and tons of theory here. I was talking about this with one of our viewers, Move11. And he was saying he didn't like the bishop d3 trades pieces. So he was thinking that maybe c4 is best. White does have a lot of space no matter what, Schieberspieler, right? But I want to know one, one line in particular. What do you guys think about this? h6. g4 is the critical move. Again, this is passive. But what about the other lines here? My biggest question in the advanced Karakhan h4 is can we play either bishop h7 or bishop e4 what about these variations where you like allow white to play e6 because i've seen a lot of people get mangled in these type of lines but i've seen other games where black got away with it you know so what i'm wondering about primarily are are moves like this Bishop e4, this this Maxime Bache versus Ding, for example, is is a well known game. Was this the game where he just he humiliated him? This was it, right? F three, Bishop h seven, e six, Queen d six. No, so Ding didn't play Queen d six. This is where Ding did like Knight f six. 
I did a video about this game, I think. Speaking of chess lecture. Schieberspieler is right. It's hard to decide when it's good and when it's bad. And all these positions are extremely similar to each other, but not quite the same, and it's extremely confusing. Like, what's good and what's not good for both sides. Sometimes queen d6 is good for black, sometimes it's not. But this seems to be the critical line, queen d6. I did analyze this a bit for another video I did on chess lecture, like, last year. I think I looked at the Satowski game, but that's from 2012. If black gets in e5, he could free his game and ultimately get the pieces out. But if white gets like a ironclad grip on the e5 square, black just gets stuffed. Seems to be what happens most of the time. Also, there's this thing where white does like g5 and completely prevents black from getting his pieces out in some positions. But the score here looks okay for black. Blavik said, I feel this e5 line is exactly what black wants to play. Never take the space Sledge gives to you. I'm not that good at the Karo Khan. Like, Sheber Spieler is probably better than me. Karo Khan is like, it's like food that gives me indigestion. It looks good, but I always get bad results with it. I want to play it, but my results aren't there. You know, I've never ever beaten a good player. It's like that Tartikover quote, like, I've never beat a well man. I've never beaten a good player with a Karo Khan. Um, probably I never will, but I want to. You know, I want to make it work. But, um, Queen d6 looks critical. Let's see what the, the Oracle says. So there's no choice. You have to take, take. So this position is freaking me out, right? F4. That's according to Stockfish, but that doesn't mean it's the only move. It changes its evaluations. We can't trust it that much. But that's the number one move. Cla you know, clamping down on E5. <clears throat> Obviously, if if white just has this much space with the E5 square, you're, you're done. I also analyzed this game with Aratunian, I think, where he got crushed. These are pretty old games, though. 2013, 2012. Karpov's suggestion, f4. Anatoly, Anatoly, Anatoly Morales. What, what are you saying? Did you play this against me, or did you play knight e2? Did we play this position? I can't remember exactly. Anatoly Morales. Yeah, 92 looks uncommon. The same idea though, playing for e5. But here there's not much Holden Hernandez. There's not much games. If you black, let black play e5, that's the question. Does he get away? Man, these are ancient games from 1994. That's, that's Karpov. But I think f4 looks really dangerous. Now black, sorry, here. Black needs a way to get out of this. f4. This is also dangerous, I guess, bishop d3. But again, e5. So, Arian Tari. Schieberspieler's general rule of if black gets in e5, <laughs> he says, if black gets e5, he should be happy. I think we should rephrase it to like, if black gets in e5, there's still some hope left. There's still hope, you know. We should tone Schieberspieler's his expression down a little bit not be happy necessarily but we'll say there's a chance we won't lose if we get an e5 um pessimist playing the Karo Khan 
there's still like a small chance we won't lose if we're able to play e5. That's that's what I would say, as a catchphrase here. Um, but the f4 just doesn't leave a lot of room for for getting an e5. Another good reason to play f4 is the fact that like yeah, like you're saying, like g3 could be a weakness. So, I have to refresh my memory here. I mean, this is a strange move. I don't really understand that. Knight f6. Getting our pieces out. But what are we going to do with this bishop on f8? Somehow this is not the same to me. Yeah, well, we've got good control of e4. It doesn't seem as important as e5. And that's the Morales method in chess. Control e5 and you control the game. Is g7, g8 playable? <laughs> I was hoping to, like, sack a pawn with g5, actually. It looks like the only way we'll ever control e5 is if we can, like, sack the g, g pawn to get the pawn to, to, to g5 so we can play e5 ourselves. Seriously. There is a little problem with that. There's a lot of problems with that theory, though. This is enormously scary. So, check this out. Bishop h3, c5, and then g5. I analyzed this game in one of my videos on chess lecture briefly. But maybe we should check with the oracle. HG5. I mean, Satovsky is a good player theoretically. But he's not perfect. HG5, HG5. So check this position out. And interestingly, there's only one game that played the same line. The engine here wants to sack a piece. And Emil was unwilling to do that, naturally. I mean, it's not our inclination to like give, give away pieces if we don't have to. The computer wants to play this. So check this out. He played knight e4. I wonder, you know, if Muzichuk, like, prepared this. She has good trainers. Those Ukrainian guys in Slovenia, like Roman, um, Michal Chisin was one of his, her trainers, who I know. She probably has pretty good preparation. So this is interesting. This variation, very interesting. I mean, I don't know what to conclude. I guess it's just unclear. But that's cool. He could sack a piece there. But there's also this move, which seems to be the main one. And this is the other game I went over in my video last year. I guess it was like last year. I don't remember exactly. But Popov sacks a pawn on g4 with knight f3. This looks really scary for black too. So let's see, knight takes g4, and now h5. And this is this is a devastating game. The Popov one from 2003. Can black defend here? It's like a positional pawn sacrifice. It is complicated, Schieber Spieler, definitely. But I feel like black is is on the precipice. I would like to play c5 if I could. I wonder if this is better than the other line, though. Critical. Knight f3, knight takes g4, h5, and now knight f6. What's the best move for black? Computer says e6 here which is an ugly move. 
Wade has really good compensation. So I don't like this. I don't know. That's what I'm worried about. And if that's the best black can do, we're in trouble. So like, the other move is this, right? Bishop h7, by the way. This is essentially a little bit passive too. Now how dangerous is e6 here? Is this worse than the other version? Because you haven't forced white to play f3 somehow? White can play knight f3 directly. And that's going to be a key idea, I guess. Forcing him to play f3 gets in the way of his knight from coming to f3? Right, no, it would transpose, but does white have better? Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so knight f3 right away. I did analyze this game. That seems like a problem. And oddly, just the one game between Simachek and Chernyshev. Chernyshev got lucky here. He was in big trouble and drew. He was getting battered in this game. So this looks like the problem with bishop h7. But there's another interesting move, g5. This is a TN by the computer. Nobody's played this. I guess bishop h7 just isn't played by many players. This just freezes black's pieces. So what happens if you take? Damn. Check this variation out. Unbelievable. Just take back with the pawn. There's no discoveries. Check. Yeah, g5 theoretical novelty. This is even stronger than f4. So I guess bishop h7 is just like over because of this line. e6 is so strong here. I mean, I guess you can take here. <laughs> Zahar Favinov. No chance. Alexander. <laughs> I think I might have seen that game. That's not going to be pretty. Um, yeah, Ivano just ripped him apart. This doesn't look good. So the end, you know, the end question is: at the end of the day, we have we can have to play bishop f5, h4, h5. And there's all these lines, right? Bishop g5. Schieberspiel, you said it's not complicated. You don't like the other line because it's complicated, but this is super complicated too. White has like a million moves here. I mean, bishop g5, scary. c4 is scary. Bishop d3 is a move. Okay, let's say h5 is better, right? I mean, this, this theory started to develop in the 90s. Karpov was playing black. Karpov was playing h5. He had a lot of interesting games. But there is a lot of theory here. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the scarier lines. Bishop g5, queen b6. One of my friends um, in Hungary, who's kind of crazy, but, but a good opening theoretician, Pop Gellert, one of my teammates, had a lot of analysis on this. He knew this really well with white. Bishop d3. I remember some game in our team championship where Gellert like sacked his B pawn. <laughs> oh yeah, you speaking of F6. I'm desperate. I was even looking at F6 here. There's some guy who plays this. Did you guys Do you guys ever think of F6? This guy Dimitriev these are old games from the 90s. I can't believe that someone actually plays f6. I know that you didn't mean it there, but I just made me remember, you know. I wanted to. 
I wanted to share this. Of course, he could transpose. You know, I think part of the idea is that he could, can transpose to a to a Gurganidza Karakhan. You know, something like f4, maybe knight h6 or g g g6. We could we could possibly transpose. I was actually thinking about e5 f6 takes, but it's not much. It's like an exchange French. But how would you take with the e pawn or the knight? I honestly don't really like either for black there. Anyway, this is just speculating. Cheaper Spiller, can you play c5 variation? Or do you just play bishop f5? I'm not too concerned about this line. That's probably not a big deal. This actually looks pretty good for black. Black has excellent counterplay after c5. This is not a problem. So the first problem is this. That's kind of the oldest though, and well known. This bishop d3 has been played a lot lately but look like black hasn't lost in any of the top games. Vidit, we can ask Vidit, he was just challenging me earlier in the stream. Anon versus Vidit from 2016. Right, bishop g5, queen b6. Schieberspieler is like Capablanca. Queen a5 check. So white obviously doesn't want to trade queens. We know all about your We know all about your fantasies of being Capablanca. But even Capablanca might have had a hard time against Tranquilizer. Or someone like that. You know, if Capablanca had played Vital Levente, who knows what would have happened. It's not that easy. Capablanca made it look easy, but his opposition wasn't that strong. Um, it looks like white might still be better here. Let's see. Oh, wow, the engine wants to play king f1. This is a new move. I love that. But that's definitely allowing a trade of queens. Schieberspieler would like this position for both sides. I think rook h3. I want to preserve the pawn structure. But I'm just getting getting kind of loopy. I'm just getting around. I don't know. King F1's a move, whatever. We don't want to trade queens really. So knight d2. Now if queen a6, white has these scary moves. Does he have some scary lateral queen move? No? It's too slow here because of e6. Queen g3. There's likely a knight going to end up on f5, so this is not, not a thing. But this is interesting. Okay, you like e6 probably, right? Knight d2, e6. Preventing white from playing e6. If you play queen a6, apparently there's this move. I'm definitely going to play that against Schieber Spieler. Black doesn't want to allow that. So, you have to play e6. Threatening to play queen a6, maybe. And now we've got some recent games. Hikaru, Gawain Jones. Hikaru again, Satoshi. It's ironic that I lost to Hikaru in a position like this. It was a French advance, but similar structure. Though I shouldn't have lost that game. Alright. 
Stockfish doesn't think that white has an advantage, really, but that doesn't make it an easy position to play for black. Knight f3 with the idea of using this square. I would look at the position like a little differently. Almost like white has an advantage. But what can he do with it? Queen a6. And now c4. So Schieber's sort of preferring knight e7 here, giving away a secret analysis. Oh, you like queen a6, c4, castles, knight e7, castles. Something like this, right? So he's sacrificing the H4 pawn. I get it. Black's king is just like chilling in the middle of the board. Everything's fine. We'll just grab a pawn on h4. It's a relatively closed position. Corsinoy would definitely take that pawn. So you're keeping the queen on a5. Your suggestion is something funky like going here. Castles. Knight f5. C4. Or what does he do? Does he need to play c4? But if he doesn't play c4, what does he do, is the question. They do c4 anyway. And then Schieberspieler is trying to sneak this pawn on h4. Pankratov versus Dreyev. So white plays g3. Guarding the pawn, it's just the position. And black castles fearlessly. Don Chinko against some guy I'd never heard of. Well, Cornet. Cornet Diamante is 2461. Wow. I'm going to move to a richer country to get some rating points. We're slumming here in Hungary. Schieberspieler and I are, we're both drastically underrated. Rating poverty is what we're experiencing. I want to move to a rich country with lots of rating points. Does anybody want to sponsor me? All right. Your line goes queen a6. Is it the previous position here? I also have hesitancy about castling. I noticed a lot of ga games by this Rosum guy, though he has another Karakhan I saw that was pretty bad. Everybody's 2600 now, it's unbelievable. Where do they get all those points? Yeah, this is, this is fine. You can delay castling. The conclusion is that forcing the exchange of bishops early is not special for white. I agree. I agree. Let's let's forget about it. But I mean that's that's common knowledge, you know. I mean everybody knows like bishop d3 is lame in the in, in the advanced variation. That's why Nigel Short plays bishop b2. You know, people try to do it in the normal lines too. Theoretically, you're trading your good bishop for black's bad bishop. Of course, it shouldn't be critical. Of course, the h4, h5 changes. It does. It does. Black's king is weaker than white's. 
Black's king is not as safe as white's. I, I agree, you know. This is important, the dynamism. So c4. Nobody plays this. Why is this so bad? Just for amusement, guys, I'll show you like one of my first tournament games. e4, c6, d4, d5, e5. My opponent played c4 after bishop f5. I've told this story before, Morales probably remembers. <laughs> but this was like my second tournament ever, and maybe my first Karo Khan ever, in a tournament at least. I had played it in, in casual games. And so I was so excited here because I realized I could play bishop takes b1, rook takes b1, and I played queen a5 check and took this pawn on b1. See, that's when I knew the Karo Khan wasn't a good opening for me. Like, from this point forward, that's like 1986, 85, I can't remember. Um, I drew after grabbing this pawn against like a 1700, but it's unbelievable. Yeah, this was the game. I remember my queen got like stuck on a6 and it was really hard. It was really hard to get it out. But I learned my lesson. Even though I, I saved the game and got a draw against a much higher rated opponent, I also learned my lesson. The grabbing this pawn is, is not worth it, you know. So that was my early experience with, with being materialistic. I'm just wondering about c4 right away. So what do we do? We play e6, right? Is this that simple? Like, I'm not seeing a lot of games here. Nobody plays this. It's kind of like a Slav. So I guess if you play the Slav, Sheepers Spiller, you play the Slav sometimes. I'm not a Slav player, so it's hard for me to adapt. Knight c3. But how do we handle this? It's hard to get the pieces out. Yeah, you like the queen's gambit declined. And are we going to take here on c4 at some point? That's normally my thinking. We take and we try to use the d5 square. Yes, apparently, like, you can play bishop b4, the computer likes this move. But, I mean, this is sort of a bluff. I never really want to trade this off. Cheaper Spiller, do you, have a, do you have a stream today? Are you going to be streaming after this? Just on Friday? Okay. Just so I can keep in mind. I don't know, the computer really likes Bishop B4. But I never really want to give up my dark square bishop and see this diagonal. We're just putting pressure on the center. Don't feel bad, I behave like an idiot all the time. Bishop b4. Um, so let's say knight e7. This was your first suggestion. What's the plan? I mean, we play knight e7, knight e7, takes on c4. a3 and now takes bishop takes c4 knight d7 knight on g to e2 it looks a lot like a queen's gambit accepted knight b6 bishop b3 this is one line now white's space advantage compensates for the backward pawn so a lot of people who are like pawn structure nazis 
will say that white is worse or something because they're uncomfortable with white's backward pawn. It's almost like an isolani. But they're just not thinking dynamically. I mean, white's space advantage and the fact that he has this square and support point on c5, I think that white is at least equal. Some people might consider white better here. But I think white is definitely not worse. And the score, the score totally justifies it. So I don't know that I would be comfortable playing this for black. I definitely feel like black is playing for equality. It's hard to... Here's a move like weird move. Maybe Anand or someone that plays the the accepted Queen's Gambit would be comfortable with this. Queen d7 with the idea of maybe piling up on d4. So is there a better way for black to play? You know, something more active. That's interesting. This bishop b4 is experimental. I mean, we're, we're actually considering like a3, bishop a5. We can't do that. Please tell me we're not playing a3, bishop a5. The one good thing about a3, though, is that he can't put a bishop on a3 if he plays a3, but I just... I need to understand this. Fugarashi game from first Saturday, probably. Tibor has excellent theoretical knowledge. He, he's written a lot of articles for, for new in chess. Um... Yeah, I, mean, I feel a little like this is a weird Nimzo. Wait, as the B file, we don't have like Bishop A6 or something like that. Robert L. 1000. I'm trying to split up the stream between analyzing some some uh, historic games, which we did in the first hour, and and also opening analysis. I'll definitely put it on YouTube. I do put all my, my, my videos up, all my live streams up on my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. But hopefully I can promote it a little bit. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with this position. I mean, the one good thing, though, is that the bishop on f5 takes away b1. You know, at least white doesn't have this, like, half of a file to pressure us. He could play a4 and bishop a3 to come. I'm a little concerned that we end up in, a, you know, a game where white just has, like, the bishop pair for nothing. And where's our play? Black doesn't have a lot of, a lot of activity. So I feel like black is worse. Stockfish doesn't agree, which is a good sign because Stockfish like loves bishops. If Stockfish says that white is worse here with those two bishops on f1 and c1, I'm a little surprised. Black doesn't have any activity Shiva Spiller was talking about playing for c5. But I'm having trouble finding a plan. I mean, I guess if you look at it from White's perspective, it's also for him very difficult to formulate a plan of development. He doesn't want to trade white square bishops, so bishop d3 is not great. If he plays bishop e2, he has to put his knight in f3. That particular, that might end up being his best, I guess. It's not that great. Um, basically, both sides have weird positions. But I'm, I'm not impressed, like 97, okay? 
when he played knight f3. Now one player played h6, 2500, taking away the g5 square. One player played knight d7, one player castled. Black is solid. Well, I'm not an opening theoretician. I mean, I might be a grandmaster if I was. My openings are probably the weakest part of my game. But that doesn't mean I don't like analyzing, you know, openings. If I had a great repertoire 20 years ago, I probably could have become a GM. But I've always been kind of lazy. I think it's my, my biggest weakness, lack of theoretical knowledge. Um, though I have a lot of weaknesses. <laughs> Knight f3 here, white just plays a4. See, this is what I'm worried about, this. c5, bishop a3, knight d7. So it's a French winnower with the bishop on f5. Yeah, it's difficult. I don't know, it's difficult to choose a variation for black. This bishop b4, it's, it's experimental. I was just wondering what happens here. There's also this move, obviously. This looks like it's not so good. Black has a5. I mean, this is a very artificial move, trying to attack b7, putting the queen on a funky square. I think that's probably a mistake. Somebody played f4. It's a bit over the top, huh? All right, no, seriously, what about reliable systems here? Main move is 97, and then white plays a3. We just looked at this. Is a3 really necessary for white? That's a strange move. There is the possibility of knight d5, knight b4, and knight c2. What if you just like play a normal move? God forbid we just play a normal move. Stankovic versus Donchenko, 2018. Matthew Turner versus Antal. It runs into bishop g4. So this is a subtle idea. Black is willing to lose a move to play bishop g4. That reminds me of another line, not completely unrelated to this. DK guy used to play this against me. No, knight f3, right? The acerbate move order, d5, e5. It's kind of like that. Where you just allow black to play bishop g4. This isn't really on the topic of the advanced variation, but it is similar. Theoretically, like black equalizes here. I just found it interesting that a player who played the Cairo Khan would play this with white. Isn't that kind of weird? He was tormenting Morales by playing the Cairo Khan with black and knowing it pretty well. And then he turned around and played this line with the white pieces. Doesn't that seem kind of strange? So he felt like this is a line where he didn't know what to do with black and then started playing it with white or something. But it's not as bad as his reputation. I remember like Brain Wall would play like c3, hoping black like drops a piece here with e6, bishop e2, c5 or something. There's this national master. He, he would play for like this cheapo trying to win a bishop on g4 or something like that <laughs> it's ridiculous um or like the other move order maybe bishop e2 e6 and then play c3 hoping black plays c5 what's the chance that black plays c5 and drops a piece anyway it's not that bad but it's not that bad let's say white plays normal moves e6 whatever you know d4 this is a normal type of position. 
c5, c3, knight c6, castles. We've transposed to something. Look at this. Check this position out. Like, Stockfish says it's plus 0.3 for white, and white has not won a single game. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Does anybody want to tell me, class, does anyone want to tell me in simple terms why white hasn't won a single game in this position? Yeah, of these 10 games, there is an absolutely, even though white theoretically has an advantage, there's a reason why white hasn't won a single game. Stockfish says that white is better because none of the players who played white here were good. You know, this is simply, it's like no strong players play this line, period. It's like the reason why, I don't know, the Smith Mora has a bad score for white even though it's probably equal, you look in the database and, and white is like terrible results. It's probably good enough to, to equalize with white, the same with this line, at least equal, yet like white hasn't won a single game. Who are these people, you know? Fide Masters, I am, maybe, but, but no, no Grandmasters playing white. The Smithmore is okay, you know, white should be equal, yet yeah, no no GMs would play it. Um, because why do you want to like lose your opening advantage so easily, not not get an edge? The same thing with this. But I was just thinking it's similar to that. It's not that bad, is what this has going for it with white, is that it's better than its reputation. Theory says bishop g4 equality, blanket valuation, it's no problem at all. But then you get into an actual game and you realize, hey, wait, maybe this isn't so bad for white. White is like, white is probably equal here. Computer says white's even slightly better, which is probably true. Stockfish maybe overvaluates everything. You can cut its evaluations in half. So say, if Stockfish says it's better by white for 0.2, I would say it's 0.1, realistically. Take all of Stockfish's evaluations and always just like divide them in half. And you get like a realistic, a slightly more realistic set upon evaluation of a position. But still, you know, white is, white is better here, even after this inaccurate knight of three or whatever. We're not key welcome. No, no knight, no, no, this is not interesting theoretically. I just wanted to make a point, like in this variation, we were looking at this. Bishop f5, c4, e6. If white just were to play like an ordinary move, he walks into bishop g4. Same basic premise. Black has to be aware to know that. So white has a hard time finding a useful move in this position, thus a3. And now black, what do you do? Okay, let's say knight d7. We'll ask Ponomaryov. I just don't think this is such an easy position to play. <sighs> this gives me a headache. Yeah, I don't really want to be part of this position for either side. It's, um... Dorva. Which is, like, tough in Hungarian. Maybe Yababa would, would excel here. It gets like ultra complicated with all the pieces on the board and nothing getting exchanged. But White has a space advantage. That's weird. Tiemann also likes to play very complicated positions. So it looks like you're supposed to you're supposed to take now. I mean, white wasted time with a3. This seems to be the safe way to play. Bishop takes, 97, and then you play this sort of recommended style with knight b6. But I don't know where to go from here. I've seen some interesting games. I remember seeing a Caruana, a similar game where Caruana lost. Maybe he actually didn't lose, but he had a bad position against Nair. That, that may have been a different variation, actually. I'm not gonna, 
I'm not sure Caruana played this. But any other ideas, guys, what to do in the Karakhan advanced variation? That was my theme here for today. I, we looked at H4. We looked at... What else? A little bit at C4. We were just saying C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop E4. It's experimental, but I'm most concerned about this. Simply A3. Bishop A5, anybody? Somehow I think Yubaba would like this. B4. I don't trust this. We have to take and play the Nimzo. The Nimzo Karo Khan. That's a weird position. All right, guys, I've got about 15 minutes left. Anybody else have any openings you want to look at while we've got a little bit of time left? Let's let's open our minds and look at something else. This is getting kind of dry. Any new ideas? Chapter one. Let's let's make this Cairo advance. Advance. Add a new chapter. Was ninety six suggested? I I told you guys that Carlson played that against Oh, you're talking about an 8h6 on move 1? No, I was hoping to keep it. Keep it like... Oh, a short look on the fantasy variation is a great suggestion. I had a game last week in this line. A training game. Where I played e6. e6, knight c3. There's a million, I mean, the problem with the fantasy variation is that it gives black and white also have like millions of, of, uh, of different continuations available. It's not as forcing, but I think what's interesting about the fantasy variation F3, the theory isn't as well worked out here. So in the advanced variation, like everything has been analyzed, but here you can go into like the 10th move and have a totally new position without really making a mistake, which is interesting. Not a lot of chess openings you can do that. Wernocki, um, Carlson is the only player in the database with knight h6 on move, on move three in the Karakhan advance. He had a terrible game against Leno that he drew, or maybe he even won, but it was an old game from like 2006, 2008 or something, I don't remember. Um, not really great for black. I like knight h6, but I can't justify it completely. So black to play here. There's this move. This is very trendy. I just try to teach people to play principally, and it's hard to teach chess players, amateurs, to teach them, if I'm teaching them to play like bringing their queen out on move three to b6, like I don't consider this to be a principled move. Somehow it's, it is, but it, it's not something I recommend to amateur players or even myself to play it because our queen is likely to get attacked. It's an exception to the rule somehow. Difficult to explain. I prefer to play more fundamentals, and I like e6 here. It opens up queen h4 possibilities, so white has to watch out for the e4 pawn. But I just want to say, I said this in a previous stream briefly, the justification of queen b6 is f3. I mean, it's much more clear if you compare it to uh, another opening, like d4, knight f6, let's say the Varasov. I had this game, I remember a game I had in the 90s against an amateur in the chess club where it was something like bishop g5, knight on bd7, f3, 
And what's Black's best move in the Verisov? Bang. You know, you've got to hit this diagonal and try to strafe that, that dark score diagonal where the white king is on F2. This is the key to kind of punishing F3. Trying to use this diagonal. I mean, this idea would definitely pop up here as well. It's possible, you know, like CD4, Queen D4, E6, and later we'll have Bishop C5 on the diagonal. Similar ideas, right? Or if you can, you can even get more, you know, straight, straight up, like fundamental. What if it's like D4, D5? It's uh, let's say a Queen's Gambit or something. What if I play like F3 here? Steinitz actually did, I think, knight c3, knight f6, f3, but it's the same thing. Anytime we do this, we're going to just tear that diagonal down and try to punish the weakness on, on e3 and f2. That's immediately the response. I mean, there are other things here too, like takes and push. So I think it's all connected in a way. Plus white has moved the e-pawn here. So that, in a sense, weakens white a little further around the king. e4, c6, d4, d5. f3 does weaken this square. So the justification is here, maybe. But not as much, you know, I think it's not as much about grabbing the pawn on b2, although that's part of the idea. I'm very reluctant to take those kind of pawns, because almost always you lose the initiative if you go for material. And yes, e5 is is the main idea. Shiva Spieler, I also saw there are people who play e5 directly, and of course, like the oldest variation is this, right? But this variation is 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 interesting. We had someone submit a game in this line to the subscriber stream last Thursday. This is well known, but it's well known that White still has a slight edge. After e6, can't you just play c5? Well, theoretically, sure. e6 is the main line, but white plays like usually knight c3. So it's not that simple. I mean, if I play c5, I could be losing here on d5. Knight c3 increases the pressure on my d5. If I try to go here now, I've never considered this. It's basically a Marshall Sicilian where White's played f3. Heinrich Danielson played it, but he also plays the birds opening. So I don't know what that tells us. Um, that's from 1991, Christ. Heinrich Danielson was 2405 in 1991. Damn, that's, that's pretty serious. He's got me beat. Um, well, people have actually played this. Casa Corley played this, but it doesn't look right. That's kind of crazy. The idea is, is not a bad one, Wernaki. I even thought of being really crazy and playing it right away. Hera Emre Jr. This is probably here in Budapest. Krivoruchka. He's a GM, Herr Imre. I actually played him in like 1997 when he was a little kid. We played in an IM tournament. Then I didn't see him for a long time. Then he suddenly became a grandmaster. It was weird. He was like a prodigy. Then he disappeared and then magically became a grandmaster. It was very odd. Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy though. You could go C5 right away. So it's just a question of when to play play for c5. c5 is a key idea. But anyways, I like e6. Schieberspieler likes queen b6. So we're looking at this. Let's just look at this. Did I show you this? Miladinovich? Mr. Chigorin? Grandmaster from Serbia? He has a really quirky opening repertoire, but he knows his, his lines really well, what he plays. Um, Igor Melodinovich was, was one of the only people who 
consistently play the Chigura in defense. This is also, I guess, sort of dubious for black. I don't know. But this seems to be trending. Queen b6. Now a4. These are older games when I wasn't playing chess. I kind of missed like 2010 to 2016. So a lot of times there's like gaps in my knowledge about openings and players between the period of 2010 and 2016. Here's a move like I probably missed completely. A4. So knight c3 looks a little more principled. And now we've got some recent games, 2016. Navarra, who's extremely well prepared. There's a book out of Navarra's games, which I think I heard was pretty good. If anybody's interested in in that. Um, there's a lot of chess books out. I gave up collecting books because I already have too many. So what's the idea here with Schieberspieler? Schieberspieler wants to go for e5, so it usually takes. This is a weird move. Knight takes e4. But like very safe for white. Schieber, are you playing? Are you playing pawn takes pawn here and going for this? No recent games at all. So I don't really know. My, my personal preference. Trading queens looks not very exciting here. Sheba Spiller would probably play this with white. Your question in that variation is where does my B knight go to? Which variation? I don't think white should trade queens. After e5 by black, right away. Like here? Where does my B knight go to? Yeah, I mean, probably d7. But this square could open up yet. With queen b6? Well, here, I would head toward the center more often than I would go to a6. You're normally going toward the center, but it's still a complicated position that could evolve. Mostly we're going to d7. Always. Always go toward the center if you can choose. I would prefer it. But this this is weird. You could also play this and like put on the brakes. So another So there's so many possibilities in this variation. That's what makes it interesting. A lot of theory still yet to be developed in the F3 lines. I played this, which I like better. It feels more principled. Way plays knight c3. I had a recent game with bishop b4, and now I have to go in a couple minutes, guys. I'll just show you what happened in my most recent game. My opponent played this, which is the main move. He said he would prefer to play this now, bishop d2. But what's interesting is I had a game with bishop f4, and now with black, what do you do? This was surprising to me when I looked at the game afterwards, not knowing the theory very well. And it turns out that knight e7 is black's most common move. I thought that I would play knight f6 here. But I got a French-like position. Normally they're supposed to play this. And I've seen this before. But my opponent just played e5. Which actually doesn't seem that bad for white. The bishop's misplaced on f4. It's getting in the way of the f-pawn. That's my idea. But after this... White here... I think 
now played knight e2. And I'm playing the French. It was very strange. I don't play the French. And now I'm forced to play a French, basically. And I felt very uncomfortable. So I guess that's why, even though the engine says that white is better, most Carol Khan players don't feel comfortable playing French. That's why this is more common to play knight e7. But it also puts less pressure on white's position. So here, queen d3 and then b6. And then you're trying to play bishop a6 to get the bishop out. I trade it off. Knight e2, bishop a6. We can't trade pieces. The knight's in the way. And now, so, castles developing. Here's interesting, the computer prefers c5, but it hasn't had a lot of time to analyze. This may not be that the position you can trust Stockfish without running it overnight or something. It's going to change its evaluation. Probably a safer to castle. So castle, castle. And all the pieces are on the board. No exchanges whatsoever. Now c5. Is there... Why is Bolagon in my mind? Another player... He wrote a book on e4, e5, didn't he? Bolagon doesn't have a Carol Khan book, does he? Why is that? As I said, I like gave up buying chess books because I can't. I don't have a place to put them anymore. Um, does anybody know if Bolagon has written a book on the Carol Khan? For some reason, that's in my mind. This looks completely logical play for both sides. Now the bishop's stuck. Incoming link. All right. So I'm not crazy. He writes books on everything. He's the next Catronius. A3. Bishop A5. <laughs> Loses a pawn. I don't like giving up my dark skirt bishop. Spanish default settings. Yeah, this looks fairly solid, guys. I gotta go. It was fun trying something new here on Wednesdays. We'll try to do this more often. Get together for game analysis and some I mean, master game analysis and opening analysis was, was instructive. I will load this into the YouTube channel, which you guys should check out, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Appreciate any donations or support we can get with subscriptions. Guys, we're going to be back. Um, no, no stream by Shiba Spiller today. We will be back on Thursday night with game analysis for subscribers. I'm going to... Uh, I got a raid tranquilizer. He's streaming live now. I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.